Texas Rangers had all kinds of ideas about how to improve this gun. And Captain Sam Walker went down to, uh, uh, went to New England, talked to Colt and said, look, here's what we need. And they did put in an order for a thousand of these things. We want something with a plow grip handle something that will just fit the hand and have wonderful balance. We want this feature. We want a loader. This thing, you it, it took a long time to reload these things anyway. And so um, he's saying, look, we'll put powder and shot in the cylinders, and then this loader will help us to uh, tamp down or use it in effect as a pistol's ramrod. We want, we want a trigger guard and we want a gun that's big enough that has power enough to knock an adversary out of the saddle we want a larger caliber and we want some of the caliber they got at that time was a 44 and 45 calibers and uh, because the gun is going to be bigger we can now have six shots six chambers in the cylinder and that, if we're carrying two pistols, that gives us 12 shots before we have to reload instead of uh, just six. And when they walked up, when they marched off to the war with Mexico, when they marched into Mexico, the guys that had two of these things had 12 shots plus a shoulder gun. They had 13 shots before they had to reload. And in this age of automatic weapons, we say that doesn't sound like much, but in those single shot days, they had more firepower than any warrior in the world, and they demonstrated that uh, in that conflict. And so now we've we've got this, and uh, the, all kinds of developments were made. This uh, is a very popular gun. This was an 1851 Navy Colt, and uh, again, a six-shooter, and it has the features I showed before. One of the features that was negative, however, was the fact that uh, there was no back strap on this gun, made it a little bit unstable here. If you dropped it, it's liable to break right here. In order to cock it, you pull the hammer back. It won't shoot until you cock it. And there is a notch cut right in that hammer. And you pull it back and you sight down that notch all the way uh, to the button on the front of the barrel. But again, that was as much of a problem as anything. So seven years later, the 1858. Uh, Army uh, model of uh, Remington. This one is a 44 caliber. It's got all these features, the plow grip handle trigger guard. It's got the loader on it. It's got a back strap now, and this back strap stabilizes the weapon. And furthermore, uh, when you cock it, you've got a long rear sight and uh, on the back strap. And one other feature made this very popular. It was the first gun that did this. You could pull the cylinder out. Once you're empty, you could reach in your pocket and get a loaded cylinder. Can you imagine in combat how much crucial time that would save? It might indeed save your life. And all you have to do is do that and you're reloaded. And so these actually were the two most popular guns of the Civil War. Now remember, that they're being carried in the scabbards on the front of a saddle. So when they decide to put them on their belt, they just pull them off like this, and that gave them reversed butts. You had reversed handles. So how are you going to draw that? Well, it's much easier, it's much better than you think. When you turn your hand over to pull this gun out of a, out of a, 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 a scabbard, your hand, your thumb just naturally fits the hammer. And as you pull it out and turn your hand over, the gun just cocks. It almost cocks itself, just like that. Later on, they would cut the flap off of this, and then sometimes they would reverse it. But uh, the reason the Army kept it that way was because that's the way they'd gotten it, and it did work for them, and they did that. The next major development... Uh, beginning in 1871, Colt came out with a uh, mass manufactured, a cartridge revolver. And uh, this thing, again, single action, you had to cock it to shoot it. You had to cock it to shoot it. And it too was a six shooter, except there's no safety on these guns. And so if you're going to stick it in your belt or something, 
you better you better leave uh, a chamber empty under the handle. They call under the hammer. They call that keeping five beans in a wheel. The way you loaded it was you flipped the loading gate open and uh, punched a, 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 a cartridge in there, put it again, and again, and again. Except you'd be be pretty smart to just carry five. Look at what this did with the cartridge belt. Now the holster goes over the cartridge belt like this, and it can be. You can slide it up and down the cartridge belt, and what they did for that is very difficult to carry a long, to pull a long barrel gun from your hip while you're riding a horse. And so what you do is, when you mount, you would slide this across your cartridge belt and put it right here, and uh, have a cross draw while in the saddle, and then you slide it back to your right hip when you dismount. If you if you want that, so that became boy did that become the gun that the, that the gunfighters absolutely love. These guns were not only good against uh, <laughs> against Comanche warriors and soldados; they were very good against each other. This is one Western films picked up on the drama of gunfighting, and uh, very early on they came up with a buscadero rig, and this thing fits. It ties down right above your knee, and um, that that made for the fast draw scenario that was so popular as Hollywood shot, believe it or not, about 300 westerns per year, year after year after year. Except you 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 search in vain if you try to find a Buscadero rig in a real western photo. They're just they're just not there. Roy Rogers, a star of those kind of westerns. They would just shoot and shoot and shoot at the bad guys, and they would fan their guns, and you'll never hit anything doing that. And Roy said the reason that they call these things a Colt 45 is because you can shoot it 45 times without reloading. Well, of course, you know. But here's what they really said in the Old West. Be not afraid of any man. No matter what he says, just call on me, and I will equalize. And sure enough, Billy the Kid took that to heart, didn't he? He was diminutive. So was John Wesley Harden.